football generally is like it's more of a male sport so the opportunities given to female footballers is not almost the same as the opportunity given to male footballers and also you don't find a lot of girls who are interested in playing ball when you start playing at a young age you're always playing with boys you're always training with boys which is a good thing because i mean it makes you as tough as they are as quick as quick as they are yeah but you don't feel as comfortable as you are because you're training boys there are things you can't just start sharing with them because you know football is also like a family so there are things you can't start talking to them about i'm a mother of three girls and i think the way we've brought them up is that um they can do what boys can do and so from the very word go uh, and, and the father loved football so from the very word go um just within the family, it was not an issue because the sister was playing football and now her, she has taken this passion. In our house, we all play, my sister and my dad, we used to play soccer. So um, every Sunday evening, we used to have like Sunday, Sunday afternoon football uh, in our compound. So we used to do two versus one, we were playing against each other. My sister and my dad, it used to be difficult for them to lose, but for me, within two minutes, they've already reached 10 and we're moving on to the next. Yeah, that was my, that was like one of my first memories of playing football. And it used to be my best times playing football, you're enjoying, you're not thinking about any other thing, you're just in the field, you're just kicking the ball. Yeah, as much as I used to lose like all the games, I was just still enjoying being outside and just playing ball. Make it look like you're floating onto the box. There you go. Uh, you still, you made it look hard. You need to make it look effortless. Nice one, nice one. But control, stick the landing. Huh? First time uh, I saw Angie in session, I think it was uh, during COVID, COVID time. And one thing that really stood out was her her determination, her hunger for football success. You could see it. Uh, she really gave it all in. It would have been, it would have been unfair if we, we do not uh, try feed that hunger, try support her dreams. So I think uh, we did our best uh, in making her a step closer to uh, her dreams. TJ is just not only a team, it's a family. And I have learned, I always tell, I always like, anyone who asks me about TTA, I always say like, my biggest growth in football has been in TTA because my technical ability has grown. My, my understanding of the game has become way better than before. Um, how I see football is not, has become way different because like a team, they create, TTA creates some sort of a family in the team. So, like, and since there was a girls team as well, it becomes easier for you guys to interact on and off the pitch. Uh, we become closer to each other. Yeah, yeah, but I can say I have improved a lot being in TTA. Like it's so <laughs> but it looks like I can. No animals were harmed in the making of this gadget. On Thursday again to play against how many goals have you scored? Five. That's the we need six. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many things I remember is uh, the many times that I would take her to different um, uh, pitches where the, the 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 coaching would be taking place, and sometimes it would be far. But you know her determination, her passion uh, was very very very. Um, noticeable and so it's something that we could not ignore. Fast forward, uh, she stays in Nova and uh, now it turned out not just to be a, a part-time thing but something that was going to define her future and so we started this conversation with coach Kim. Uh, would she want to pursue uh, maybe university elsewhere and uh, in doing so pursue uh, a career in football. I remember it was towards the end of February. Um, the last weekend of February, we had a, 
sort of a scrimmage with the boys um, after the game. It was our last training in school. After the game, Coach Kim called me, we had the conversation and we had been talking about it before. He had been mentioning it to me a couple of times before, but it hadn't really clicked or anything. Like, I was just like, we'll figure it out when the time comes. But then when he actually told me about it is when I realized like, wow, okay, this is a big thing. I'm about to take a big step into my career. I'm about to start a whole new life. Now, but he missed two sitters in a row. That's so crazy. Holland, I was not expecting to see that. There you go. Yeah, push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. Don't get comfortable. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. This journey of traveling abroad uh, to pursue her football career, we did not think at any given moment there would be issues because the scholarship was very clear, the documentations were all clear, the university and the coach in the university she's going, they're very passionate of, of wanting her. We held so many um, virtual meetings with the coach and so for us it was a straightforward issue. We knew everything was set. We were only left with the interview and then we had even started booking flights and started thinking about what you need to buy, to park and all that. Then came the first interview. Um, well, um, I was confused after the interview. I get this call uh, in the office that uh, mom had been denied. And I, I think I, I couldn't think beyond that. And I remember what came into my mind immediately is what is going on in my child's mind. I remember immediately after the interview, I just went to the car. I didn't even want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to talk to my parents. I, I remember going to my room. I remember even Coach Kim calling me. I refused to pick. I'm uh, going to my room and just locking myself and wondering, ah, hey, life has, has come to this. Okay, um, I have to rethink and re-strategize my life and do everything again, you know. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't believe at all that it went the way it did. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a difficult one, but yeah. just trusted God. Uh, Coach Kim was very involved and also very sad for Angela as well. And he did everything he can to ensure maybe the second interview would be okay. Just talking and seeing what could have been the issue. Uh, talking even with professionals to just ask what may have prevented when we thought we did everything right. Um, fast forward, she <laughs> went for this interview and uh, uh, again the phone call came. But mom, I've gotten. Uh, and um, I think for me, I concluded, you know, sometimes God will delay some of these things so that you do not think they are pap. Looking back, I can say I'm grateful that maybe that the interview didn't go through at that time. Because uh, first of all, at that time I was, I was injured. I had a knee injury, I hadn't fully recovered. Um, and I was needed to be there fully fit and ready to play because the season was starting in August. So, and I got injured in around April, May and had been out from May till like July. July is when I started playing and I'm not, at that time I wasn't even fit enough because I was too focused on the injury. Um, at the same time, psychologically, I might have been prepared, but I think now I am more prepared because I, I think I have met the expectations that are required going there in terms of like preparation, like preparing to go and play there. Um, then I don't think I was, and I am grateful for that. It might have been, it might have taken a toll on me, 
but I am very grateful for that. <laughs> Angela is our last born. Being the last born also means she's still a child to us. She's still the baby of the home. So it hasn't been easy, but because of her passion and knowing that for her to be able to realize her dream as a girl playing football, we realize that we must let go. That has not been easy. The other thing that maybe personally has helped me is uh, I'm a born again Christian. And so I realized holding on her, you know, <laughs> The God of Kenya is the God of the U.S. And uh, the fact that whether she remains with me or not, her destiny is in God's hands. So it's not easy. It's something we are still struggling as we um, anxiously await her departure. Uh, we know there'll be a gap in the family, but we are very, very excited for what is ahead. We are very positive. We are actually 100% sure if this is God's will that her future is bright.